Molecular modeling is a really important topic to be able to understand and to visualize molecules in three dimensions. For this lab, there is no pre-lab quiz that you need to complete. There is no notebook check that you need to do. What you are going to be completing is the experiment report form for experiment 11 in your lab manual. And then to turn in this report, you are going to be taking a Canvas quiz. You do get 10 attempts at the Canvas quiz, and it's your highest score that is recorded. The quiz is based on the report form that you fill out in your lab manual. So shapes of molecules are really important because they do determine um, different properties of the molecule. So things like boiling point, melting point, vapor pressure are all determined by the shape and the polarity of the molecules. It can also affect if we think about biological um, examples whether or not the molecule is biologically active. Is it going to bind to a protein? Is it going to fit into the active site of an enzyme or not? This is particularly important when designing pharmaceuticals to work in particular situations with particular enzymes and proteins. So to draw a Lewis structure, the very first um, thing that you need to do is to add up the number of valence electrons that each element in the structure has. So if we have an example here of nitrite, nitrate, nitrogen has five valence electrons based on its position on the periodic table. Each oxygen has six, and there's three oxygens, so we multiply six times three, we get 18 valence electrons. And then because this has a charge, it's got a negative one, and that negative one means that we have to add one more electron into the total valence electron count. So we end up with 24 electrons. Now if it was positively charged, then you would subtract an electron. We start by drawing the least electronegative element in the center. So that's the furthest left and down on the periodic table. We draw the other elements around it. We know that in order to be a covalent compound, there has to be at least one single bond holding each of the elements to each other. And so we draw a single bond from our central atom out to the atoms surrounding it. This requires six electrons. Remember, each bond is two electrons. And so doing this step uses six of those 24 electrons that we had started with. We then draw the outside, or we fill the outside elements octet. And so in, with this particular example, we add six electrons to each of the oxygens, which gives us a total of 24 electrons. We are not quite done yet, though, because our nitrogen does not have an octet. It only has six electrons around it, two from each of the bonds. And so in order to have the nitrogen have a complete octet, we need to take one of the lone pairs off of the oxygen and share it with the nitrogen, forming a double bond. So our overall structure, once we have completed our Lewis structure, is going to look like this after we share those electrons. Now it doesn't matter where we draw that double bond at. So uh, on the last slide we drew it at the, the top off of going up from the nitrogen. But it really could be 
in any position. It could be the going to the right oxygen or to the left oxygen or to the top oxygen. These are what we call resonance structures. So the total number of electrons does not change, just the position inside of the structure. And you can look for resonance structures whenever you have a double bond present. Let's look at an example. So here we have carbon dioxide. We're going to start by adding up our total valence electrons, or TVE. So if we look at carbon on the periodic table, it's part of group 4, which means that it has 4 valence electrons for carbon. We've got 2 oxygens, so we're going to have 2 times 6, because oxygen is part of group 6 on the periodic table. So we end up with 12, 16 electrons that we can work with. So we're going to start by drawing the least electronegative element in the center. If you look at your periodic table, you'll see that carbon is in the center. And we're going to draw our oxygens around the carbon. We know there has to be at least one bond holding each of those oxygens to the carbon. And so I'm going to keep track of my electrons. I started with 16. There's two electrons in, this in one bond, two electrons in the other. So four electrons have been used up. We have 12 electrons left. We're going to fill our outside octets. So we've got two from our bond, four, six, eight. Two from our bond, two, four, six, eight. That uses all 12 of our electrons. There are no electrons left. Okay. Are we done with our Lewis structure? No, we're not because our carbon does not have eight electrons. It only has four. So because it doesn't have enough, we're going to start sharing electrons. If we did get to this point and there were electrons left, they would then go on to that center atom. All right, so we're going to share our electrons. That will give carbon six. Molecules do like to be symmetrical, and so we have to share another two. So our Lewis structure for carbon dioxide looks like this. Okay. So now bond polarity is if the elements are different from each other with one exception so a carbon hydrogen bond that is nonpolar but any other combination of elements for the most part will be polar so it because carbon and oxygen are different this will be a polar bond. Okay. Polarity, I'll show you tables in just a little bit to help you identify polarity, but the way that I like to think about it is if it is symmetrical, then it is going to be nonpolar. There's not going to be a greater pull of electrons one direction or the other if it is symmetrical. And so because our carbon dioxide, no matter how we look at the molecule, okay, the left side looks like the right side, the top looks like the bottom, it is very symmetrical. This is a nonpolar molecule. Formal charge. 
Formal charge is a way that we measure to see the if the bonding, if the electrons are are, are in, added in a way that the atom likes to bond. So if we look at carbon, we're going to start with the valence electrons off the periodic table. So carbon has four valence electrons. We're going to subtract the non-bonding electrons. So any electrons that are in a lone pair on our carbon, we have zero. There's no lone pairs on our carbon. Minus one half of the electrons in the bonds. So remember, each bond contains two. So we have two, four, six, eight. So one half of eight. So our formal charge on carbon is going to be zero. So carbon likes to make four bonds. Carbon in this case has four bonds, so its formal charge is zero. If things are bonded in the way that they prefer, the formal charge is zero. Let's calculate it for oxygen. Now both of these oxygens are bonded identically, so we only have to calculate it once because we'll get the same answer each time we calculate it. So formal, ch the number of not of lone, sorry, number of valence electrons off the periodic table is six. Non-bonding electrons, so those are the ones in the lone pairs, minus four, minus one half of the electrons in the bonds. So we have two bonds attached to oxygen, and so there's two electrons in each bond, so four. So we get a formal charge of zero, and so oxygen likes to be bonded two bonds and two lone pairs, that's the way it is, and so the formal charge for each of our oxygens is zero. The molecular geometry, we have to count electron groups. And we look at the central atom for electron groups. So we're looking at our carbon in this case. And any lone pair, any type of bond counts as an electron group. It doesn't matter if it's double, triple, or single. They all count as one electron group. So if we look at our carbon, we have two electron groups. There are no lone pairs. And so I'll show you on a table coming up in just a minute, but two electron groups around a central atom with no lone pairs, that is going to be a linear molecular shape. Hybridization, the hybridization of the carbon, I like to look at it as electron groups as well. There is a table that can help you and I'll show you that in a minute. But our carbon has two electron groups. That means that we need two orbitals to put those electron groups in. We always start with S, so it would be S and P. So our hybridization is sp for the carbon. Now if we were looking at the oxygen, okay, how many electron groups do we have around our oxygen? There would be three electron groups. And so we are going to need three orbitals to put those electron groups into. So it would be sp two. Two of the p orbitals are required to make the three electron groups. Now p can only go up to three because there's only a total of three p orbitals. If we get past um, four electron groups then we have to start adding d in, into there. Here's the table for finding electron or the molecular geometry. So for our CO2, we 
we have two electron groups. So two electron groups. None are lone pairs. So our molecular shape is linear. And you can do this with other shapes as well. You're looking around that central atom, counting how many electron groups there are, how many are make bonds, and how many are lone pairs. For polarity, so AX2, A is your central atom, X is any exterior elements. So for our CO2 would, would fit into this case. It is a linear shape, and so our polarity is nonpolar. can't pull electrons one direction more than the other. We said our carbon had two electron groups, so it is sp hybridized. It's a linear geometry as well. These tables are also found in your lab manual. Couple of important reminders, larger molecules can have more than one central atom. So if you're dealing with your carbon containing molecules, each carbon could be a central atom. You can look at them one at a time. Hydrogen cannot be a central atom because it only wants a duet. It only wants two electrons. So it is always on the outside of our Lewis structures. Elements in row two cannot have more than an octet, so the maximum that they can have is eight. But if we move into row three or below, then you can have an expanded octet. You can have more than eight electrons if it is in row three or below. And the reason for this is because they have access to empty d orbitals. They can start putting electrons into the d orbitals and have more than eight electrons.